Good morning, everyone. Well, it looks like the RCMP are setting up a speed trap, maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. Beautiful Monday morning. Yeah, I didn't do a video yes last night because it's only like an hour drive and it was dark by the time I was going. Mmm, yummy chips. So we unloaded in Kelowna. Yeah, they're building a brand new school there. There were some tight, tight turns in there and very close quarters for a Super B. But we managed to get it done. Now I'm headed to Adams Lake Empty. Picking up some lumber there. That's going back to Penticton. So as long as I get loaded in Adams Lake at a reasonable time, I'll make it back to Penticton tonight. Because it's only probably about three, four hours loaded, probably around four hours of drive time. This is going to be a short week, guys. It's only going to be a three, three day week for me. it a little bit further down where the 90 starts. Well, in fact, this shouldn't be 90 at all. It should be 100 all the way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so we're right beside Kalamelica Lake, headed northbound on Highway 97 towards Vernon. Pretty much smack dab halfway between Kelowna and Vernon. Just decided to stay home since it's only a three-day week. Aside from the fact she hurt herself on the weekend, so she's hobbling around a bit. I think she'll be fine in a couple of days. She's already recovering pretty quick. Bruised pretty good. I iced it right away. Some pretty good gouges on our knee. Adams Lake. I think I've only ever loaded there once before. Maybe twice. Lots of construction down there, new houses, three-door garages for them poor people. Man, that lake is beautiful. I love Kalamaka Lake. Going kayaking on there is just so much fun. But when a storm comes, holy smokes, does a storm come fast. We were kayaking way out and I was like, hey, it's getting a little windy. We should maybe start heading back. By the time we were back, we had huge waves. She, Jess was right behind me, but she would disappear behind the waves. It's like, stick close together, keep an eye out for different boats because they cannot see us. That was fun soaking wet by the end. It was a hot summer day, so it was fine. It was a good
good good weekend. Saturday. <laughs> the uh, the shop, the dealership where this truck got an oil change. They couldn't find the key to the truck to get the oil changed. I put the key exactly where I told them I was going to put the key. So I just go, so did you check where I put the key? It was dark, so I didn't see it there. I'll check again. It's like, yeah, let's get a flashlight and check it again. Call me back if it's not really there. It was there. I didn't get a call back. I am ready to shift into winter. Yes, I am, Mr. Sign. I am ready. My truck's not. I'm running on four slicks and four summers. So I need eight new winter tires. This batch has offered twice already to put the new winter tires on. I'm like, yeah, let's wait a little longer. They're not, they're still all legal. The, the slicks, they're still legal. Let's just wait right to the beginning of the snow when I really need them. And if I wait a little too long and have to chain up before everybody else once or twice, I'm okay with that. Let's have a really good tread on those tires for winter. Especially since I run to the U.S. a lot, like south to Portland and to Montana. I don't want to burn off tires, winter tires, before winter's here, so... There was guys that were putting their winter tires on a month and a half ago. Ah, what a beautiful day. I always like this section of Highway 97. <laughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> Just a beautiful section of highway. That's the other thing that happened. So, Friday night, the border crossing guy gave me a really hard time. Border crossings are usually really easy. It's a couple of simple questions. Really easy, nice, friendly. Every, you know, I have very few problems with border crossing. I'd say 99% of the guys are always professional. Even if they're not all friendly, they're all professional. And most of them are friendly and respectful. And But Friday night, I don't know if he was just in a bad mood. I haven't seen him before. But he had a stick so far up. Pulled in, gave him the paperwork. He just goes, what's the trip number? I'm like, well, I honestly don't know. I haven't asked dispatch for the trip number from the broker. Well, I need the trip number. I'm like, well, this is the first time 
any crossing guy has asked me for the trip number. He just goes, I know you guys have these barcodes on here, but it's not border crossing's job to look up the trip number using the barcode. We're supposed to at least handwrite the trip number on top of the first page to save them time. He's the commercial trainer of the region for border crossings and it's a $159 fine or something like that if I don't have my trip number written on there. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, that's the first time anybody's said anything. In the past, people have just scanned the barcode and done their thing and uh, moved on their way, on the way. Well, they've been, they've been doing your job for you. They've just been nice to you. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll call dispatch and get a trip number. Um, you want me to pull out to where we normally have to pull out if there's some kind of issue? Goes, no, no fine for you today. Scan the barcode, bleep, bleep. There was a trip number, punched it in. He was good to go. So after reaming me out for seven, eight minutes, took him two seconds to get the trip number. I'm just like, are you serious? That's how much work it is for you to get a trip number. If you're about saving time, you would have just told me, hey, by the way, you should have the trip number on there. I can just look it up now, but in the future, if you could please have a trip number on there, and then it would have saved time, and I would have gone, oh, okay, I'll put a trip number on there in the future. But no, long speech and threatening me with fines. And definitely had the little man syndrome. But that's one one bad egg or maybe just having one bad day. As often as we cross the border, we have very little problems. Declare everything. If we've got fruit in the truck, yep, we got some apples in the truck. Okay. Food or uh, keys and meat. Always declare everything we have. Never been told we can't bring it across. <phone rings> kind of foggy out here. I'm gonna turn my fog lights on. Vernon's uh, got a cloud over their head. Uh -huh. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. It's got his four way flashes on for some reason. Huh. No. People are really slow in front of them, that's why. Fifty. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you tomorrow. I have no idea what we're doing tomorrow. We'll find out when we find out. You guys have a great Monday.